Hi everyone. How are you all doing? Am I audible, visible? If yes, then just give me a thumbs up and we will start with the discussion of the anesthesia questions that came in your November INI set and I hope you gave a good exam from what I understood this was a decent paper which was not very difficult not very easy just the way an INI CET paper is supposed to be isn't it Am I audible and visible? Just give me a thumbs up and we will start. All right. So there were six questions that came in anesthesia, uh, which is an expected weightage. Three to five is what we expect. But in the last three, four exams, we are seeing an increased number of questions that are coming in anesthesia. So now we can anticipate in the next need as well as in the next that you are going to get more percentage of questions in anesthesia than you normally expect. Out of the six questions that came, six were expected. That is something that we know that is to be read. But five came from the notes and the classes that we took. One that did not come is actually a question that shouldn't have been asked because it's a very weird thing to ask an LMA which is based on the brand name you can't expect can't be expected to remember the different brand names so we stick to the routine ones but yes that is what they asked and somebody was obsessed with Ambu Aura so it's okay uh, sometimes they do things like this and we are okay with that but five were very straightforward very simple questions that came from the note the first was little weird according to me they asked Ambu Aura 40 very specific see Ambu is a company Ambu is actually a company now and Ambu produces its own line of uh, LMAs, uh, laryngeal mask airways or supraglottic airway devices because LMA is also a company now. LMA has been uh, what you can say patented as a company. So LMA, so the common ones that we discuss, the ProSeal, the Supreme, uh, they are made up of the, the company called as LMA. And then you have a company called as Ambu. And then you have a company called as Teleflex, which makes iGel. But iGel is a standard terminology. Even if Ambu makes an iGel, it will be called as Ambu iGel. But out of all those LMAs, we do what is classically the most commonly used and taught is what LMA Classic, LMA ProSeal, LMA Supreme and iGel is there. And then there is an intubating LMA, which is also made by LMA. But this time they asked Ambu Aura 40. And it would have been good if they would have given an image because obviously they don't, they, they can't expect that you will all know uh, based on the brand names what type of LMA it is. It is ridiculous because there are about 30, 45 types of different types of different companies of LMA that are available in the market. And nobody is expected to know the type of LMA based on the name of the company. But yes, we know that there are two types of LMA, first and second generation LMA. So third and fourth are automatically ruled out. There is nothing called as a third or fourth generation LMA. Now, as first generation LMA are simple ventilating devices. We have seen them. It has got only one lumen and that is used for ventilation while second generation LMA are ventilation plus gastric drain. That is the catch in it. So its tip is having a hole through which a pipe can be passed that is used for gastric drainage that is used for gastric drainage. Just a second. All right. So now this was a 50 50 chance whether you thought uh, it is first or second. Most of the students have actually left it not knowing and I don't blame them, but yes, it's a first generation LMA. This is how it looks like. It has got nothing. It has got a ventilating tube. It is the Ambu version of LMA Classic. 
सो और फोर्टी इज इक्विवेलेंट टू एल एम ए क्लासिक बट दिस इज फ्रॉम द कंपनी दैट इज अंबू एंड दिस इज फ्रॉम अ कंपनी दैट इज एल एम ए और राइट बट इफ देर वुड हैव बीन अंबू और गेन देन अंबू और गेन इज इट्स इक्विवेलेंट ऑफ प्रो सील दैट इज इट्स अ सेकेंड जनरेशन that is it is a second generation okay so can't be expected that you will know this thing so it's okay don't worry about it i will make a list of all the lmas and now i will discuss them if the examiners are wanting you to know it then we'll know it there's no problem we'll just look go through it and we'll see what are the names and we'll do it that is not a problem all right let's come to the second and from there here on you get the expected questions in your exam which drug shows adrenal gland suppression and we know that in iv induction agent there is a drug called as etomidate uh, there is a drug called as etomidate that shows dose dependent inhibition of 11 beta hydroxylase enzyme dose dependent inhibition of 11 beta hydroxylase enzyme that means it causes adrenocortical suppression and this is something that we know anybody who is live can just put in their views on the question or the options if i have made a mistake or if there is something else in the question then you can always point it out but so far what i have received are very straightforward questions with very straightforward answers all right so dose dependent inhibition of 11 beta hydroxylase is the side effect of using etomidate it's a very very specific side effect so it has got two very specific points one it has got dose dependent inhibition second that it is cardio stable second that it is cardio stable so two very very classic points about etomidate which we never forget and that is why this was a very straightforward thing which everybody knew the answer to do and and everybody marked correct question number 3 there is a patient with a fracture of third to eighth rib and isn't sufficient pain relief isn't having sufficient pain relief with systemic analgesics what would be the next best course in the action so what do you think would be the next best course in the action supraclavicular brachial plexus block cervical plexus block lumbar epidural block and thoracic epidural block c3 to c8 now sorry third to eight rib third to eight rib that falls in the segment of thoracic 3 t3 to t8 isn't it t3 to t8 now the name is only thoracic 3 to thoracic 8 so how can answer be anything else apart from thoracic epidural block you put an epidural in the thoracic epidural space and when you give the drug you get only segmental block in the segment where there is pain so you block from t3 to t8 and it is one of the best ways of managing pain in multiple rib fractures which causes lot of pain and pain is the reason why sometimes the patients have to be intubated because you can't they can't breathe because of the pain because this is from the chest wall somebody breathes and if there are fractures and the chest wall even the movement of the chest wall is causing breathe, breathing problems Uh, is causing pain so the patient can't breathe isn't it so that is the reason why uh, you give thoracic epidural so thoracic epidural is one of the ways of pain relief another is obviously systemic analgesics morphine fentanyl which are very very good morphine fentanyl which are very very good apart from that what you can do you can give a intercostal nerve block so you block the intercostal nerves and these are done at multiple levels because when you give it at one level you only block in that one segment so you can give intercostal nerve block you can also uh, give a thoracic paravertebral block which covers multiple segments so for t3 to t8 you might require it to give at two levels thoracic paravertebral block thoracic paravertebral box so these are the ways in which you can control the pain on rib fracture 
pain on rib fracture question number 4 again an expected question true about recess in a child and whenever we discussed and in fact just before your exam we did an ini ct predictor series in which in cpr i told you that you have to remember one table and most of the time from that one table only you will get all the questions that is do's and don'ts of high quality cpr in which one of the criteria is the depth of compression so in an adult the depth of con compression is 2 to 2.4 inches but in a child and an infant you always say at least one third diameter ap diameter of the chest that was the first option compression should be one third ap diameter of the chest and the moment you saw this option you know that the correct answer was a but let's explore what are the other options compression to ventilation ratio 30 is to 2 with a two rescuer and this is something that we have discussed many times in the differences in the adult and pediatric cpr that in a child with two rescuer you will always increase your number of breaths so you will make it 15 is to 2 so this has to be wrong because if you are two rescuer and it's a child cpr then you will always do 15 is to 2 why most common causes of cardiac arrest in a pediatric patient are respiratory in origin rather than cardiac so it is only prudent that you will increase the respiratory rate as compared to the breaths so instead of doing 30 compressions and two breaths you will do 15 compressions and two breaths adenosine is preferred drug by intraocious route now there are two problems with this statement one problem is that adenosine is not a drug used in cardiac arrest in fact it causes medically induced cardiac arrest it slows the heart rate to the point that it can cause a systole medically induced cardiac arrest so one adenosine is not a part of rhesus second it will always be given through central line it has an extremely short duration of action 32 seconds very short duration of action if you give it through a peripheral line before it reaches the heart the action is gone that is why it is always pushed through a central line and then pushed a normal saline directly goes into the heart acts for 15 seconds and the action is stopped so extremely short acting adrenaline is used 0.01 mg per kg 1 is 2000 dilution so this is right 0.01 mg per kg but this is wrong remember in cpr the dilution is always 1 in 10000 never 1 in 1000 always the dilution is 1 in 10000 never 1 in 1000 question number 5 everybody okay with question number 4 jr circuit is used for jr circuit is used for and we know jr stands for jackson and rees modification of ir stps and after a long time we are seeing very standard easy questions from this topic something that we keep reading year after year after year and if I, and i always tell you when i'm teaching these topics although they might not be asked in the recent uh, past but they have a very probability high probability because in anesthesia you usually get questions from this only it is circuit of choice for pediatric patients how do you define a pediatric patient less than 20 kg less than 20 kg for both spontaneous as well as controlled respiration now this was a very good question it was a little tricky question it took me some time to get the options if there there is any problem with the options you can always tell me this was about incorrect statement about thiopentone the options were renal clearance is high and that is the reason for fast termination of action has high lipid solubility is given as fast iv injection and rapidly increases brain concentration and thiopentones get redistributed in adipose tissue so we know certain facts about the pharmacokinetics of thiopentone that one it is highly lipid soluble so this is a true statement so i'm going to write true and false so this is true statement then thiopentone is given as a fast iv injection yes it's an induction agent so it is always given a fast iv rapidly increases brain concentration yes that is why acts in one arm brain circulation time first 
in one arm brain circulation time that is 15 to 20 seconds that is the time it takes for the drug to go from the arm into the brain arm brain circulation time so even this is true and one of the very unique properties of thiopentone why it is ultra short in action after a single dose remember after a single dose and this is the catch point is because of redistribution in the adipose tissue because it gets redistributed in the peripheral compartment and that is the reason why it has a ultra short duration of action in a single dose because otherwise it's a highly lipid soluble drug with a very long duration of action so this statement is true but the reason why it is short in action is not because of high renal clearance but because of the phenomenon of redistribution so if you keep giving thiopentone or you put the patient on infusion then your patient will have very long duration of action of thiopentone so renal clearance is high and that is not the reason for fast termination of action of thiopentone it is metabolized primarily by liver excreted primarily by kidneys but the reason why it has a ultra short duration of action after a single dose is not renal excretion but it is the phenomenon of redistribution and that is why if you give multiple doses of thiopentone then the action would be very very long all right so this was a little tricky question but rest of the three options were absolutely correct statements which we read which we write which we know which we discuss and everything about them was completely okay so by that by the idea of exclusion you could have always managed to uh, mark the first option correctly all right so these were the six questions that were asked in anesthesia in your INICET and remember that ambu aura it was just pure spiteful question i would never want any student to have a question where they have to remember a brand name so don't don't feel bad about it but apart from that all the rest of the five questions were very straightforward very simple and something that we always discuss so i hope you liked the paper and i hope you did your part and just waiting to get a good result from you and to see you on the other side all right thank you so much bye bye and good night